Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. My son is 13. Carol says, my son is 13 and having a lot of sensory issues. I blame it uh, to his hormonal changes. Any idea how long this will last? Uh, and there's inappropriate touching, bouncing, hyperactivity. Okay. So it is possible that the hormonal issues are making the sensory stuff worse. That's it. It does happen and you're right at that age. And so you are absolutely right that it could be related to the set to the hormonal stuff. The hormonal stuff will start to balance itself out in a couple of years. It does like there's a whole period of time for kids 13, 14, where, you know, especially boys, it's like kind of their hormones are increasing and it's changing things a little bit. But I would recommend that you don't, just to wait it out, I would recommend that you start to kind of deal with the sensory issues as a whole. So when it comes to sensory issues, I think that my perspective on it is uh, like every, like, you know, Shannon, you know how many times I say it's got to be fair. And the way that I look at it with sensory things, it's like you have to make it fair. So in other words, to some extent, you want to allow some sensory uh, stimulation or that will help the child regulate. Um, on the other hand, you don't want to allow so much sensory activity that is going to detract from the individual's ability to do other things, pay attention to other things, engage with other things. So I uh, think of, and everyone's kind of different, right? When we talk about sensory stuff, some kids, uh, light will have an excessive amount of visual stimming or gazing others will have an excessive amount of touching things so you just want to so depending on what it is it doesn't matter like it could be touching or viewing or uh, auditory stuff where they're playing with there's excessive amounts of everything what you want to do is you just want to kind of bring it down to a point which is uh helps the child individual become calmer and uh regulated but not so much so that it's taking up their whole day so uh, an example would be you make an area of the room which is the the child or the individual sensory place and uh, x number of times during the day let's say five times a day they get to go over there and spend 10 minutes uh, regulating themselves. Now, the sensory area could be a giant bean bag with a nice little head, you know, noise canceling headphones. Uh, you can have a couple of uh, boxes of beans and rice if they need to have sensory uh, regulation from a tactile perspective. Uh, you know, whatever it is, depending on what their particular needs are. And you let them kind of you know, engage a little bit, but then that's it. Like the rest of the day, they need to interact with the world, right? Now, that being said, there are certain things that in general, you can help the child no matter what time of day, all day long, you can help them um, tolerate. So a lot of our kids are very reactive to, let's say, light, much more so than we are. In that case, I generally think of the individual as like someone who is walking out into sunlight and we will definitely, if you, someone that's walking in from inside to outside and it's bright light, what are you going to do? You're going to put on sunglasses, right? It's a very normal thing to do that. So there are situations in life where you can actually uh, give tools to the individual so that they can go through life tolerating these more harsh sensory inputs, such as sound. I always tell parents, make sure your child has access to either noise canceling headphones if it's a child who's sensitive to sound, uh, or tinted glasses. 
when it comes to uh, visual sensory things that are disturbing to them. Um, this is why there are now fortunately places that are down regulated, right? Like sensory sensitive movies, movie theaters where the sound is lower and things are less intense coming at you. So I guess, so what I'm saying is again, it's kind of up to you how you wanna deal with it, but certainly waiting to see if the child grows out of it is not probably not the best thing. Uh, you should probably try to get the child uh, their sensory stimulation uh, under control, regulate it, reduce it, limit it to certain times of the day and the rest of the day uh, prompt and help the individual kind of interact a little bit more. Maybe, hopefully that answered your question. And if not, please let us know a little bit more detail. Great. Uh, it reminds me though, because your advice, which is exactly what T Dr. Temple Grandin's mother did with her, she said, you can spin that plate on your bed for an hour a day, but then yeah. you got to go muck the stalls and do those other things. So you have the exactly. time and a place that you can do your sensory thing, but then you got to do other things. And some of the things she built in were things that, that Temple liked, like Temple loved to draw and she loved horses. So she said, you got to draw that horse right now. Yeah. And put those and and you know Temple draws some pretty amazing plans for things now. So you know, at a top of her field. So there you go. Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.